Greetings gamers. Today for your viewing pleasure we got a BV1911 and you might be thinking to yourself what is the Riggle doing reviewing an RGB broadcast monitor? He only reviews those crappy consumer grade sets you find out on the curb. Well there is some truth to that. I have been trying to find those air quotes crappy consumer grade sets that people find on the curb and shining a light on them because I don't think they're crappy in fact I typically game on these consumer grade sets over there and I don't game on this BVM that much largely because of its small size but these pro monitors are cool uh, I just didn't think you needed me to tell you that there's like enough hype out there and uh, I've been making these videos so that people will go out there it's like a public service thing I'm doing like if I found a Panasonic in my last video and showed that off and that said is so like just unassuming you would just pass it up but guys you can have just as much fun on that Panasonic Panasonic is this RGB monitor here but um yeah that's enough rambling I do have a bunch of pro monitors and I got some other like uh, VJ monitors and projectors and I got some other stuff I'm going to be showing you guys this year because I've sort of ran out of consumer grade sets and uh, I think I might be a victim of my own success when I started making this channel those consumer grade sets were a, I could find one every week and I just can't find them anymore and now guys are asking 300 bucks in my area for like this XBR 200 so I just I'm not picking up consumer grade sets anymore so I'm just gonna I'm gonna review my my pro monitors and some other uh, monitors I got for you guys uh, in the next year and we're gonna start out with this BVM 1911 here and I'm just doing these now just just for fun because I like making these videos and I think these are cool to these are fucking cool monitors especially this one these broadcast ones with well we'll get into it here in a second but we're doing this for fun here. I don't think anybody's really going to watch this video and go out and get one of these. They cost thousands of dollars now. And this one's really rare. It was made in 1994. You can see up there it says BVM 1911. That's the tally light. And you can short out some pins on the back remote and make that sucker light up. Which, I don't know man, I, it'd be fun to do but I just get nervous like sticking pins and shorting things out. Like what if I short out the wrong pins? You know, and I guess if I ever get bored enough, one day I might actually go in and fuck with that telly light. And you can see on the left here, it says HR Trinitron. HR means it's a high resolution tube. So when they were making these tubes in the factory, Sony would take the best looking ones and put them in these broadcast monitors. And if they were like 20 inches, like this one is 19 inches, they would call it a 900 lines. This one's called 900 lines. And then the same tube with the same part number, if it didn't look as sharp, they would just say, oh, well, that's a 700 line or 600 line. Put it in one of their PVMs. And they got to have like, I think 700 or 800 lines at 20 inches to get that HR designation on them. Yeah, nobody was actually counting lines, guys. They, it was kind of a marketing thing. But this 900 line, it's rated at 900 lines. There's a definite difference between this and a 700 line or a 600 line like it's the black lines the scan lines are almost as sharp or excuse me as pronounced as the colored lines we got a 480i image up right now i got my computer hooked up to it so we won't be checking out the scan lines like this but we'll check out scan lines here in a minute uh, one thing to bring up you know i do have my uh, computer plugged into this and it's playing a 480i signal um, all this display will show is 480i. It is not multi-format. Uh, what else to say about this beautiful beast here? I mean, let's just get in here. So it is, I mean, it's like ugly beautiful. Um, how do I describe it? Okay, so like looking at the chassis. Like look how industrial this thing is. You know, it's not beautiful in the sense of like, the XBRs or a presentation monitor it, you know it's made to look like a workhorse which it is but everything on it you can tell that the the money men weren't weren't haggling with the engineers when the engineers wanted to put something on this like these handles are sturdy these uh, buttons on the front here for the pots are super sturdy just everything on it 
is I'm gonna adjust my focus really quick here everything on it is just top of the line like no expense spared like everything just the buttons you push just it's the engineers got their way on this everything is very well made and it's, I don't have anything else like this you know all of my devices are all cheaply made even my consumer grade sets you you know that are high-end they're not as well put together as this thing like the set is incredibly heavy even for a 19 inch monitor it's probably over 100 pounds so there's just a bunch of metal in it you know these handles are well made we pointed those out already okay what else are we going to point out here it's got this pull out drawer on it this drawer right here and this key's pretty cool you can lock the drawer i used to lock it up because you know i got a six-year-old and when she was like three or four she'd come over here and push all these buttons and yank on this but now i just leave it unlocked and this is the cpu unit down here and i believe you need this thing to to get it to work now this cpu unit is pretty damn cool guys i prefer this over the on-screen display that you'll get with say like um a bvm 20 f1u and by the way this bvm 1911 here is the predecessor to the bvm 20 f1u um, both are 19 inch tubes probably have basically the same tube in them they're both rated at 900 lines this is a 480i signal here so even in 480i you can see scan lines which is interesting like people argue with me about that they'll say like Look guys, you can see the scan lines on that, right? If you have a sharp enough TV or monitor or whatever, you will see scan lines in 480i. It's not like a defect of one of my TVs. That's just that's just how it is. Okay, but we were talking about this pull-out drawer here. So, notable things on here are the geometry adjustments. Let's see, where is my screwdriver? Well, you get the idea. You get in there with the screwdriver and you just turn them. Let's do some examples. But uh, before that, let me show you. You've got your geometry here. Um, important to point out here that I use a lot is the H centering. So if you go from like a Sega Genesis to a Super Nintendo, the image will be shifted just a little bit. And instead of just living with it or over scanning the whole thing, you just come in here and and just center it with the screwdriver and you don't have to get into the menu and press a bunch of buttons you just turn the screwdriver um, there's also a crosshatch pattern what did i hit split screen i don't want to do that this crosshatch pattern pull up your own grid here um, the menu oh what did i do i hit another button the menu here pulls up the main menu uh, you can do a lot in here. You know, I don't want to mess nothing up. This monitor is very adjustable. One thing to point out is, uh, let's see here. Configuration, monitor type, I believe it is. It shows the hours down here. It's got 35,000 hours. Right about 35,000 hours is when, let's see if I can get out of here. 35,000 hours is when broadcast stations will start selling tubes and equipment like this. And that's how I picked this one up. I picked it up from a broadcast station and it was older and they were still using CRTs at the time. The guy had a bunch of them, but he was getting rid of this one because it's ours. It was at the point where they either needed to get rid of it or put a new tube in it. So he sold it to me and you know, the, the colors on it are a little bit dim. I don't want to make too much out of it because it's not bad at all but I do have to have the contrast up um, when I'm gaming that's contrast all the way up which is a bit too much right about there is where I normally leave it which is higher than I normally would have any monitor or TV usually I have contrast around the middle so this one you do have to turn it up a bit because the tubes a little older but it's still sharp. Um, oh yeah, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we were talking about the options in the pull-out drawer here. 
you also have these convergence options and I'll show you how those work and it's super easy to adjust the convergence on this set and when I bought this monitor here I bought it for 250 bucks from a broadcast station in Seattle uh, I thought that getting the convergence perfect would make the monitor super sharp I don't know why I got that in my head I thought oh all of these monitors their convergence is off and that's not and that's why they're not sharp well that's not really the case guys um, I can adjust the convergence on this and make it perfect but it doesn't really improve the picture at all so let's look at that check it out guys we're gonna make some convergence adjustments so I can turn those pots I was showing you a minute ago let me get my screwdriver in here yes yeah, so look we're on the bottom left of the screen so I turn the bottom left pot check it out yeah you know I can get this dialed in however I want so that was the the uh, vertical bottom left and this is the horizontal bottom left pot you know and if you make an adjustment on this bottom left it tends to adjust something else that you didn't desire somewhere else on the screen but if I want to I can go in and turn all these pots right here and I can get that picture dialed in perfect so see like uh, you got the vertical and the horizontal and you got what is it three six nine twelve 15 pots each one of those corresponds to a section on the screen I mean it's pretty self-explanatory there and then you got pots on the sides that will adjust like a whole section of the screen rather than just one little section it'll adjust like the complete left you yeah. know but yeah, you can get it dialed in however you want man you can get it dialed in perfect I will notice that if I get it dialed in perfect and I come back like a month later it does tend to drift so if you wanted it perfect, you know, if you're one of those guys, you'd have to adjust it like once a month. And, you know, it doesn't improve the picture at all. So like, if it's way off, right? Like, let me get it way off. You know, if it's like that, yeah, you'll notice that when you're gaming. But if it's just a little bit off, even like that, you're probably not gonna notice it. Okay, so here's something I adjust all the time, which is the geometry going from say an arcade game which is how the screen is set up right now to play like a two what would it be 224 by 480i uh, screen resolution um, it's and it's it's not set up right like look it's not lined up so if i was to actually play like say willow arcade or street fighter 2 right now i probably want to go in here and we're going to go into those geometry pots and we got normal um, v center horizontal center is obviously off so we're gonna turn that one that one's a Phillips screwdriver so we get that sucker in there and let's center it okay so that's centered now it looks like vertical height is it's too much so we'll go in here it's not doing nothing oh I'm in 16 by 9 yeah, it has different pots for 16 by 9 versus under scan, which would be like, that would be under. See, that's what we want to do. We want to see that full, this whole green border, like on the border. So, yeah, we just got rid of the vertical. So, we're going to go to vertical height on normal and bring it in. Yeah, so that's pretty good right there. You see how easy that was? Just turning some pots. It's a lot easier than going into on-screen display now the problem is you know now we're set up to play an arcade game but uh what if we wanted to play a Super Nintendo game it's gonna be off like all of these games are just a little bit off and let's see let's try to speed this up here Yeah, now you can see like a black border on the side of the screen and up on the top. So if I was to play this right now, I would go in and I'd be like, okay, vertical height. Boom. We're going to expand that. And then horizontal center. Boom. 
we're going to put that over there and now the screen is is dialed in look how fucking sharp that is i mean this thing is just it's perfect for me when i got a, a pvm i thought it was amazing compared to the consumer sets i'd seen before that so i went out there and got this which i knew was sharper and you know i was like oh man i gotta get something even sharper than this because this comes in at 900 tv lines and they do make thousand line 20 inch monitors and uh, i did eventually pick one up not a bvm but a, a vga monitor that's even sharper than this and that one is even it's too sharp so like this is actually sharper in person this monitor this looks more like a 700 line on the video but uh the scan lines aren't as thick as the colored lines but on that other one I have, that VGA monitor, the scan lines are just as thick as the colored lines and it's just too much. So for me, this is really like, this is the perfect, the perfect balance for me where the scan lines are just a little bit thinner than the colored actual lines of visual image. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, guys, I'm going to try and show off the colors on this. It's hard to do with the phone because of the white balance on the phone and blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, I think you can get a general idea from looking at this that these colors look good. I got the camera a little bit out of focus so that I can show off the colors. Um, yeah, so this TV, when I turn off the image to the TV like this, like, it doesn't have the darkest glass so this isn't the darkest black I'm gonna get but with the picture on it's got good really good excellent contrast probably better than any of my other TVs I got really I mean that's the thing so with broadcast monitors with that high-end tube with the they pick the best tubes they can find they don't just get the tubes that are the sharpest they also pick the ones they got those good colors. I think the two probably go hand in hand. Good colors with good contrast. Um, like I said, it doesn't have the darkest glass. And that's something I'll see people kind of going sideways with sometimes. They think, oh, I have good black levels on my TV. Just because the glass is dark and when there's no image on it, it looks dark. But that doesn't mean necessarily you're going to have good contrast. Um, yeah, this TV... It, uh, it's got 35,000 hours on it. Like I was saying, they were getting ready to sell the thing and that's why I was able to pick it up. So it is a little worn out. Like I do have to turn the, the contrast knob up on it. I'll do that now. Turning it down, turning it up. I gotta have the contrast knob up a little higher than I normally would because it's a little bit tired. But even a tired BVM is looking better than basically any of my other tubes as far as colors love to see a fresh bvm i got a buddy who has a, a fresh bvm tube maybe he'll let us do a video on that okay so if you want to make adjustments to the color on this bad boy here we do have these buttons down here let's see if i can get autofocus going here let's zoom in Let's see, focus for me, buddy. Okay, so you can turn off the red and green guns, and now it's blue only. And then it also has this blue only mode right here. But if I turn that on, it just goes gray. I think the right way to do it in the manual, it says to use this blue only. Like, it has very detailed instructions in the manual on how to do color correction on this. But for me... The easiest way, which I think technically is not correct, is you just turn the red and green guns off. And now we got this blue only screen up here. And this is where you'll dial in um, your chroma and your brightness and contrast. I got a video on that if you want to know how to do that. But yeah, this is convenient because this monitor has buttons for it. You don't have to put like a, a theater gel on it or nothing like that. Here we are around back. We got our input boards. You got composite A and B and the sync line for your RGB is on this board. And then next to it here, we have our RGB board. 
you know, R, G, and B, which also will take component R, Y, um, Y, and B, Y. And you have to have these terminators on the end of it unless you're actually outputting to another monitor. And then it also has the, uh, the, the DVI, or what, not DVI, I don't know a lot about this signal, the digital component signal, digital RGB. If anybody knows about that, go ahead and comment on it. I'd like to know more. Um, yeah, what to say about all this here. I, I wonder if I took one of these boards off, if I could have another RGB component board. But since this board has the external sink on it, you might kind of be stuck with this. It's not a big deal for me because I have my Extron switcher up there. I don't need an extra board, but there was a time when I was hoping to get another board in here. So what else to check out? So this is interesting here. This is the power, which is also, like you can pull this thing out. This, oh, I'm sorry. There's like a power board right here. That's also, I believe, hooked up to, oh no. So, okay, so this is the power board and below it is the computer. Um, the computer unit that you use to turn all the, the pots in the drawer. And this is a multi volty You can adjust it and push this over and get um, 240 out of it, say, if you're in Australia. And there are settings for converting it over to, to 50 hertz. Like down here, you can see on the badge, it will do 50 or 60, so you can do PAL PAL signals with it and you can plug it into North American power supplies or European power. Um, yeah, so here's the model number BVM 1911 made in Japan. No surprise there. And where's the manufactured date? Here it is over here. 1994. This monitor is almost 30 years old. And I just love all the badges on here. It's got all this stuff, says like uh, video, audio equipment, professional tested, just, yeah. Unscrewing all this and getting the, um, getting the shell off, I was struck again by how well made this is. All of the screws are all the same polished screws for everything. So it's super easy to work on. You don't have to keep track of what screw it is. All these boards are heavy duty. All the shell is. Like, there's so much little attention to detail. Like, even on this shell here, like, the, the screws are all recessed in here. Into this little dimple. It's just... And the screws, when you screw them in, they, like, they click when they're in place. And then they come out super smooth after that. It's just not something I'm used to feeling like working on cars. Like this is somebody's baby. Whatever engineer made this probably was in love with this monitor. Coming in here and just looking at all the boards. It's just super impressive how sturdy and well made it is. It's got a focus pot that is actually separate from the flyback. Man, let's see. I got to turn the ISO up. See if you can uh, turn it all the way up. Let's try to lock that. Um, so you can see the anode cap going to what would be the flyback, but it's not. I don't know what it is. It's like another pot right there with the screen adjustment it's a big sturdy dog with this big old freaking hot line to it and then below it down there man you can just barely make it out is let's see if we can see it is the flyback it's that black thing underneath this black thing man it's hard to describe well anyways the flyback is separate from the focus and the screen control pots and those are the only pots I did notice on it um, yeah it's super sturdy looking uh, let's look. you got these boards on the side here if you wanted to work on something you can just pull these boards out they just well I got them got them screwed in 
Let's turn that ISO down. Okay, you just unscrew this and you can just pull these boards out and work on them individually. Very well made. It is next to impossible for me to show you the, uh, the badge on the tube in there with the shell on and I don't really feel like taking it off. But luckily, maybe not so much luck as excellent design, they went ahead and put the, uh, the same sticker, more or less, with the same tube badge number right here on the top of this chassis. So there's the number there, M49JJP20X. That's the same number on the badge down there. Okay, so final thoughts on this bad boy. So it's a lot of fun to mess with this thing. Like just unscrewing it and working on it helped me get in the mindset of guys that are like BVM botherers that just like to go in and just mess with these monitors instead of actually playing them because this thing was a pleasure to work on just unscrewing the screws I was like oh oh that's so satisfying compared to like working on a, uh, a standard definition monitor like I got over here like taking the case off on those is a nightmare this one is just so easy to work on all the boards are right there everything's clean inside and just it's like a work of art the engineering on this thing uh, making adjustments on that board is entertaining and fun. Like I don't mind turning a screw in there versus if I'm on another PVM where there's like a, an on-screen display, I don't even want to like make adjustments because I, I don't want to like cycle through a bunch of on-screen on displays. So this thing is really my dream CRT as far as the 20 inch broadcast size. Like I said earlier, it's not a thousand line sharp, which is actually too sharp for me. I draw the line there at 900 and uh, you know, it's easy to work on. Yeah, I mean, I tell you guys to go out there and get one of these, but I don't even know how much these are now. And like I game on my consumer grades way more than this thing. You know, I watch movies on my consumer grades. I'm not watching any movies on here. The screen's just too small. There is something cozy about having a 20 inch monitor and sitting right in front of it. And I do that from time to time. You know, um, I probably fire this thing up once or twice a month. Yeah, so what else is there to say? I mean, go out there and, and play some PC Engine games for me, guys.